Hello everyone, welcome back to Season Gaming's continuing E3 coverage. Uh, this is our day two recap. We're gonna talk about everything we saw on this second official day of the full E3 conference. Uh, we kicked our day off this morning, uh, meeting up with the community manager and some of the team from Warhorse Studios, work, uh, makers, excuse me, of Kingdom Come Deliverance, a game that I've written and talked about prior. And so we got a good look at uh, what's coming down the line for that game, including some of the things on the roadmap, their upcoming From the Ashes DLC, and the new hardcore mode. So we'll be talking about that a little more in the future. There is an embargo on that content for a week or two yet, but uh, plan to see more from that in the future. We then uh, headed over to the Xbox experience and got to um, you know play some more of the titles there. I got to meet with the co-founder of Capybara Games, um, Sean Lorish, I believe it's pronounced. Yeah, it's as close as we're gonna get. That's as good as we're gonna get at this point yeah. in the night. Uh, really, really nice gentleman. Um, pleasure speaking to him. Got to play below for a good uh, 20, 25 minutes at least. Uh, we talked through a bunch of the details, the crafting. He showed me some things. So you'll be seeing uh, some content coming from me on that soon. Yeah, you should be watching some footage right now of Ains playing. Um, while Ains was doing that, we had a couple of pretty big sightings for us. Uh, yeah. We had Phil Spencer walk by as Ains was playing talking to one of them and he jumped up like a little kid to maybe potentially get a picture <laughs> with him say hi and two minutes later Larry Herb walked by and I actually did get a picture of him the funny thing was is I ruined the picture pretty bad because it was a selfie shot and I took the picture without a smile I had like my mouth open it was just <laughs> really weird I don't know what happened and how it happened but uh, we did get we did try to get the Sea of Thieves pinned downstairs didn't work the lines have just been nuts for that Yep. And uh, Ains got some good gear from the Xbox store today, which was the last day that they were open for E3. So he got that hat, um, which is a cool Gears hat. Gears 5 hat, yeah. yeah. And uh, we were back there for a bit. It was a good time. So um, Yeah, and we also got, uh, we were fortunate enough to get the highly sought after yeah. ID at Xbox plush Xbox One controllers, uh, yeah. thanks to... Uh, some talking to some of the developers about their games and some other things that, uh, you know, we got stopped probably 10 times today, yeah. including by Xbox employees asking where we got those. So apparently they're not easy to get a hold of. So that was real cool. Very cool. Um, we then headed over to the start in the South Hall today, uh, as we said we would yesterday. And so our focus today was going to be uh, Bandai Namco. Ubisoft and Bethesda and trying to get a look at all the games, you know, they announced get some more gameplay footage for you So what do we start with in terms of games today? Yeah, so let's start out with Bandai Namco So yesterday we did uh, get a bit of Code Vein. Um, the line was short. I guess both days um, For Code Vein. Yeah, and you we could were, get in and play pretty quickly. Yeah, it's a good five six minute demo Yeah, so we showed that yesterday. We're not gonna reshow Code Vein, but what we did get We don't um, want to see Burt falling off any more cliffs. Hey, hey, that was that was skill. That's what that was. But uh, what we did get is some Soul Calibur VI uh, footage, yep. which um, was really cool to get. Um, I wanted to grab some Geralt footage, but um, no one was playing as him. Um, so we did see someone playing as him yesterday, which was cool, but we were too far away to grab the footage. So I did get um, a fight with, I believe, Mitsurugi. And uh, who was the other person? Gosh, I can't even think. Maybe Sofita is who it was. And uh, it was very cool to watch. It's a very different uh, layout of the way the fights are happening. As you're watching the footage, or maybe well, I won't even talk about Soul Calibur as long to get the whole footage to show, um, but you'll be able to watch it on our YouTube channel to see the full footage and the full fight. It seems like you have to win three rounds to win the whole fight, when the typical fighter, you only have to win two rounds mm. of to win a fight. There does appear to be some finishing moves and some really cool animations to those, which are not really typical of Soul Calibur, so it was a lot of fun. But it moves silky smooth. Um, it was a lot of fun to watch. I did get some footage of the roster kind of cycling through, so you can kind of see that. But um, if you are a fan of the series, you will, or I should say you should not be let down because it looks pretty cool. Um, as we were in the Bandai Namco area, uh, we moved over to Divi uh, Divinity Original Sin 2. Yep. Um, it was running off a base Xbox, and it was pretty impressive to see it play um, in the form that it was because it's releasing August 31st, and it will be enhanced as well. So we, what we got to play, which, which was very short, Ains only played five minutes maybe. A couple minutes, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's one of those games that doesn't really capture very well because you really have to get into it. You have to see the story. And seeing three, four, five minutes of it is really just going to give you just a, a tiny bit of, of what we get to play and see. So we did get it for you. Hopefully you're enjoying some of that footage. Once again, you can see the whole video 
um, on our upload uh, uploaded off-screen uh, gameplay uh, footage there. Um, I already kind of shared yesterday the um, Jump Force, so you got to see that at the Xbox experience. There was some long lines for Jump Force at the E3 South Hall, so we didn't bother recapturing any footage there to kind of see that. Um, there was another Japanese game which was called um, Naruto Strikers, which I had no idea what that yeah. was. And when we were trying to capture footage, they had closed the lines. So all that was showing there was a menu screen and we couldn't capture anything else on that. So um, kind of a letdown there. They did have the characters of Soul Calibur come out again and we got some fun pictures with Siegfried there, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. So then so, we moved over to Ubisoft. Yeah, so Ubisoft was really promoting Just Dance 2019 today. We had a full stage show. They had all kinds of crazy characters up there doing moves, different music. Uh, it was really kind of... A festivist for the rest of us. <laughs> it was like very festival like. Uh, yeah, well, it was funny because we saw, we heard all the music and we're like, oh, they're just playing music. But then we turned the corner, there had to be 15, 20 people on stage. Oh, easily. There were, yeah. there were fans, there was employees. Um, not only that, but they had the two massive Ubisoft screens showing the gameplay and the camera on the bottom left of the people dancing. We got the footage, so you're watching it now. It was actually a pretty good time. Ains thought about going up there, but then he changed. I was close. His mind. I was yeah. close. I didn't want to show everyone up, so yeah. we, we pull, I pulled back. But, yeah. oh. but it was it was a lot of fun. But yeah, they were pushing Just Dance to, um, <coughs> or sorry, Just Dance twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen, yeah. Um, all day. I, I, there was multiple events. They had people coming up. Many it's a times. huge game for them. Yeah, sells all kinds of copies. So yeah. um, we then made sure to get some Skull and Bones footage. So watch that for a little while today. Pretty cool. Um, it looks to play quite well already. So it won't yeah. surprise me if this is a earlier uh, twenty nineteen title for Ubisoft. But um, yeah, I'm I'm really interested in that. And then we um, we also jumped over and started watching some Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah, so Assassin's Creed Odyssey, uh, Ains was able to get footage over the shoulder of uh, another person, not one of us, but the guy was pretty horrible. Then he moved over to another screen and hopefully got some better footage there. It was it was um, mediocre rather than ter terrible. So yeah, I so I mean, um, it's uh, the lines for Assassin's Creed Odyssey were the longest lines for any Ubisoft game that was able to be played there, and it was throughout the entire day. Um, we just found it more fruitful to go somewhere else um, and get other games and, and captures instead of waiting in a three-hour line for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yep. Um, we also attempted to get some For Honor DLC footage. Uh, the downside to that was is that nobody was picking the new classes. No, um, no. And so we would get behind um, someone or we would try to get in line and no one was playing them. So we were just like, there's nothing really to see here. Um, I think we would, we're just going to kind of pass on the For Honor footage. You can simply find trailers for it. Um, it's all over the place, and they showed plenty of footage um, during the Ubisoft uh, actual conference. Yep. So there's plenty of that. Um, the last thing that was kind of going on within the Ubisoft area was um, they did have a bunch of Siege, uh, I guess... What they were showing was the developers were playing against some influencers, yeah. um, which was kind of fun to watch. There was a, a ton of people got together in the Ubisoft um, area and watched, which was interesting. The so Ubisoft um, booth is really cool the way yeah. it's laid out. So it's, it's actually each major game, and then there's an open stage, eight stations, huge place to sit. Yeah. So a bunch of us are sitting with these huge screens uh, watching this uh, Rainbow Six Siege match between these... Yep. Uh, and I, yeah, I found it entertaining. If you're a Siege fan, you probably would have loved it. Um, I'm still new to Siege. I have it. I haven't installed. I just never started it. Um, Ains has played a bit of it, but it was entertaining to watch, and you had fans cheering and stuff, so it was kind of cool seeing kind of the community come together to watch them play. Yep. Um, so that was uh, Ubisoft. I mean, like I said, uh, we've got kind of what we've uh, needed to get out of Ubisoft. Um, we might try to get our hands on Assassin's Creed Odyssey if we can. They're giving away a cool little helmet on there, but if the lines just get too long, um, we're just not going to worry about it because there's so much else to do. Problem I have though is if we um, if we do get the helmet and I put it on, I may get mistaken for Leonidas, and I, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want that happening throughout the show. So yeah. Anyway, so, uh, mov moving along. <laughs> so we. Uh, <laughs> If, uh, if you've been watching Season Gaming for a while, you know that uh, I did an interview with uh, Anthony Palma, who is the CEO of Jump Gaming, um, uh, what, last year? It's been a while now. So, yeah. um, real good group of people there at Jump, uh, and we've stayed in touch, and so uh, we met up with him and talked about kind of the future of the industry, some things around uh, game streaming, what he thinks, uh, his opinions on... Um, PS Now and Game Pass and cloud uh, gaming, and cloud gaming like in the future where that's going. So 
look for uh, nothing to really report on here. It was just a really good conversation around the industry itself. So yeah. hopefully we can line up something with uh, him and the group there again in the future and kind of reflect on you know where it's gone over the past 12 18 24 months next time we chat officially yeah, that was really useful so, um and, and anthony's a great guy so yeah if you haven't was, checked out jump gaming please do yep. it's a great service um it's uh run by a really good talented group of people and a uh, bright future as yep. well so check it out yep um, we made our way back to the South Hall, so we were going to focus mainly on the South Hall. Today, tomorrow, we'll be focusing on the uh, other hall. Um, and we moved our way to Bethesda. So uh, Bethesda has a very, um, maybe you call it interesting booth. Booth, yeah. Um, it's kind of mixed in with a lot of different things. Um, they, do, they do so many different things. It's kind of yeah. Like, so they you got to mix in PC gaming in there. You got to mix in mobile gaming now, which is a big reality. thing. Virtual reality. You then have a Switch gameplay. Um, and collectibles. Yeah, they had a whole booth of collectibles, and we're actually, I'll actually show you the collectibles now. We each gathered a ton of pictures to kind of show you yeah. what's coming down the pipe. Including the Fallout 76 uh, collector's helmet. Yeah, yeah, so seeing that up close was really cool. It's super detailed and super It's nicer uh, than I thought it would be, yeah. yeah. Um, on the downside, there's no Fallout 76 gameplay to the average uh, attendee of E3. Uh, there's been talk that there has been some uh, private meetings and stuff of, of yeah. people being able to see some more stuff on it. Obviously, um, we're not getting that background or that uh, back room uh, type of footage or anything. But they do have a kind of a, a cool thing where you walk into the Fallout experience and they have kind of like a makeshift shelter yeah. where you walk in and there's people in full costume, full character, and they're acting like they're in a shelter and you're just another person that's in the shelter at that moment. Um, that was an extremely long line. Uh, we didn't uh, actually wait for that one. We might do it tomorrow if we get a chance. Um, but we'll probably get some uh, better pictures tomorrow as well of what you can see from the outside because it's completely clear. You can see straight through and see what other attendees are doing in there. Yeah. Um, Ains got to watch some DLC for his Game of the Year last year. So we got to see some uh, Prey. Moon um, Crash. Yeah, Moon Crash. Uh, yep. Ains intentionally chose not to play because he wants to kind of experience it on his own at home, kind of going in raw. But we did get a lot of good details about it um, yes. as to what it is. Spoke to one of the dev team about it. Um, first up, and we did not know this, I believe uh, Jazz over Windows, Windows Central reported on this uh, unofficially last night, but it has been enhanced for the Xbox One X finally, something mm -hmm. we've been talking about since last year. Yeah. So uh, he told us today it runs at a locked 30 and it runs at 1440p. So I think originally it ran like 900. 900p on the and, Xbox. And frame rate issues. Yeah, it did run at 1080p on PS4, but they had frame rate issues as well. The PS4 Pro did get an enhancement about a month after release, and all they did on that one is also run it at 1440 yep. at a solid 30 frames per second. That's, so we're, that's what I played. We're, we're pretty much getting the same performance that the Pro has on the One X if you're a One X uh, player. Yeah. Which... Um, also found out that it is not a continuation um, or a prequel to the Prey story. It's actually what's going on on the moon base during the Prey game. You don't play as the main character that you played in Prey. So that was very interesting. Yeah, and um, he said it's got six areas, uh, each one about as big as one of the main areas on Typhon, um, mm -hmm. which is, uh, or Talos, excuse me. Talos, yep. Um, Talos which is, um, is impressive. He said it's also about 20 to 30 hours worth yep. of content. Um, and it's very, very challenging, he yep. said, because you're, you're, the plan is to die many, many times. You're basically uh, running through and trying to collect secrets that are around the, the moon base and uh, escape with them is the story and he said it is story driven so that um, as you play and get further and further you'll become stronger but you'll also uncover more of the secrets of the moon base so very intriguing to me as i love prey so much so if uh, if you like me and really enjoyed prey uh, moon crash it's out now yeah and it's 20 bucks so definitely check it out he also said if you haven't played prey they're doing a bundle right now we can get prey and moon crash for 40 bucks so Probably the best 40 bucks you could ever spend, I think. It's a, it's a no-brainer at the moment. But uh, I will be playing. That'll be the game that I play, excuse me, uh, when I get home now that it's finally enhanced. That's been what's been slowing me down versus repurchasing it on the PlayStation 4. Um, as we move further through the Bethesda booth, um, I did get some photos of Fallout Shelter being played on the Switch. They had a station with four Switches. Um, also got a picture of Wolf 2 uh, playing on the Switch, and it's kind of what you'd expect it to be. You're not getting the same experience as you are on the other consoles or PC, um, but it's playable um, is all I can really say on the Switch. 
it's really hard to capture switch footage because um, it's on the switch for starters. And number one, where the well, not not a negative tone. It's just it's hard. It's a small screen. I know, it's, it's hard to get screen. it on. Yeah. And uh, the belt where they kind of uh, kept you away from waiting in line was a bit far, so it would have been just very poor footage. But did get a picture with some pretty high resolution that should give you something of an idea of what it looks like. Um, they were running some Quake Arena, um, and we did kind of capture... Quake Champions. Uh, Quake Champions. Um, and I did capture some footage of that. They were having a 4v4, um, I guess, gameplay that was going on during that time. It was fun to watch. It kind of brought back some old memories of ours from the old Quake days when we... We did get our hands on Elder Scrolls Blades. So um, if you're a mobile gamer, you're more than likely going to enjoy this experience. If you're not a mobile gamer, you're more than likely not going to enjoy this uh, mobile experience. Um, they did have it running on an iPhone 10. Um, so when you pulled up, there was what, like eight phones just lined up in a circle. Yeah, they had um, like an arena almost. Yeah. And when you got to play this, I think it was almost like unlimited play. I was playing for quite a bit. No one was telling me to speed up or slow down. Um, it's different. It's literally kind of like the VR experience to where you have to touch where you want to go and it moves you forward. To hit them, you hold the button, or sorry, hold the screen, and then swipe in the way you want to. I didn't spend longer than maybe five minutes, and I was like, okay, I'm good. I've got what I wanted out of this. Yeah. I think from an Elder, Spro uh, Elder Scrolls experience, it's pretty neat on mobile. Uh, I know that uh, Bethesda's plan is to move it across all platforms, and you'll be able to connect to all of them in that universe. So I thought it was cool. I'm not a huge Elder Scrolls person, but I know you are. What are your thoughts from what you play? I, the problem is I like Elder Scrolls, but I'm not a mobile person. Yep. And so the thing I've said to you before going in is I bet it's kind of just touch and too oversimplified for someone like me, and it was. Like Bert said, you just kind of push the move to a location, you push the attack, and it's just, I don't know. For me personally, <laughs> eh. But I, I could see, if you're used to mobile games and you like Elder Scrolls, I could see it being a big thing. Yeah, it was. Uh, you and could, it ran good. It ran really good, actually. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the experience is across all phones. I know right. that the uh, iPhone 10 is a pretty strong phone in the industry today. Uh, your other ones, like maybe your Google Pixel, your Samsung Galaxies, they should run it just fine. It runs in portrait or landscape, depending on how you do it. Mm -hmm. That was actually one of the cool things. Yeah. Is, um, you could literally turn it, and the experience was changed right away based on you turning it when, in a, whatever hand mode that you have it in. Yep. Um, so that was cool. Uh, we, we finished that up, and then we moved over to the Rage 2 booth. Uh, you can only play this one based on appointment. Uh, we have an appointment, or sorry, we're planning on getting an appointment tomorrow to get our hands on it. They fill up pretty quick, so we're going to try to get there and see what's available to us. They're completely random, and you literally get a slot on what's available. Yep, and um, then you get some ice cream. You get some ice cream afterwards. Uh, the Rage 2 booth was very interesting. They had this big ice cream truck, and then they had some screens with a green screen behind, and they had some props that you could use and take some pictures in the, I guess, Rage 2 universe. Yeah. They had a um, the hammer with, I don't even know what that thing's called. You have the carnival, you hit the hammer, and then it shoots the thing straight up. That's not helping in any way. I know, what you, I know there is a name for it. I have no way idea. way too late at night. It's yeah. not going to come to me. So they had that, and there was a line that wrapped around it, and I, I don't even know if there was a prize. I think it was just like, come hit this it's thing. And, part of the yeah. whole Rage 2 environment they're pushing. Yeah, so right. that, that crazy, funny post-apocalyptic wasteland. Yeah, it was cool, and, and uh, everybody that was there that was working was in character. Which yeah, I they did, was really do a cool. real good job. Yeah, so the Bethesda booth overall was pretty entertaining. Um, we had a good time around it. Um, it was kind of a small, smaller type booth as far as like walking room, so it was very packed all day long. They didn't have any Doom and uh, Eternal um, yeah. footage or anything. They simply had a statue. Fun little contest to where you take a picture with it, um, hashtag it um, when you, or add it, I should say, on Twitter, and then they pick, I think, their two favorite pictures. Um, yeah, so help me contest. out because my picture's up there. It's on Twitter, so retweets and likes appreciated. <laughs> Uh, so that's what we got out of Bethesda. We we got our experience there. We'll be returning tomorrow for hopefully some Rage gameplay. After that, we move back to the Mixer booth. Uh, one of the cool things about the Mixer booth is they had live gameplay going on that was being broadcasted on Mixer. Uh, they yep. had Division 2 being played. They had a massive stage where we saw Larry Herb um, out there and a bunch of the Mixer team. Uh, in uh, our his, his podcast, too. So Jeff Rubenstein and yep. Josh Stein and, yeah, talking. Uh, I think Phil was up there earlier today. I think so. I, I think I actually saw that on Twitter. We didn't see the uh, Phil in the interview, but we saw Larry Herb being interviewed. 
Um, they also had a Forza Horizon, uh, I don't know, the full wheel, the, the everything going on with it. Yeah. Um, there was a bit of a long line for that one, and we had already played plenty of Forza Horizon. So more than anything, it was cool to see it being played by, by fans. Who um, aren't very good. Yeah, we noticed that if you are using the wheel for Forza Horizon, you're probably going to struggle. And that's actually what we saw all, all day. I've not seen someone play the wheel really well. Mm. So that's kind of a, a letdown. And that was pretty much it for our South Hall experiences and what we're trying to tackle. We didn't have time to go through the, um, the, the front side of the square side of things, in which had Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Kingdom Hearts. Uh, and Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. So they were both a three-hour wait time to play either one of those. And we figured once again that our time was best used capturing footage for, for not only us, but for people that are interested in keeping up with it elsewhere. We've already captured Kingdom Hearts, um, and we've actually got what we needed from that one. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we'll see if we actually end up doing that, but we're not seeing anything revolutionary or anything different in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's pretty much just going to be the best experience from the Tomb Raider games that exist already, fully enhanced, ready to go when it launches with more story, obviously, with the new story. Yeah. Um, but they did have some people uh, in costume for Tomb Raider as well. We did have some fun sightings today. So we both got pictures with Jessica Chobot. Um, she yeah. was there simply looking at some, uh, I think, the Fortnite booth. Yeah, she was filming the Fortnite yeah. booth. Yeah. And then we were like, hey, can we get a picture of you? So we got that. Uh, we did see the legendary Miyo Miyamoto, which was... Um, no, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at the, the oh. entourage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he shows up. And I see him in the distance, I'm like, holy crap, it's him. And immediately... It, it, it's who? Shigeru Miyamoto? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you and, mean when you said Miyazaki? Oh, I said Miyazaki. I'm second, like, who? I was thinking of something. And so I immediately went for my phone to try to get a picture of him, not with him. <laughs> and I went like this, and immediately a security guard said, down. And he had a posse of about 12 deep surrounding him. Yep, um, and a he, wall. And a wall around him. And any time he stopped somewhere... Literally, a wall would create around them, and there was massive dudes. I mean, they were big, um, and I think there was a bit of the Nintendo team with them. We saw Jose, who we actually did get a picture with, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and he's a tall guy to begin with, but there was five other of those guys, and then a bunch of Japanese folks that work at Nintendo with him. And so my best assumption is that he was just checking out the South Hall, um, seeing what it had to offer. And um, I'm assuming that if he was there by himself with maybe one other person, he might get jumped with hugs or people wanting pictures or something, and he'd never be able to move anywhere. So it makes sense, however, the fact that people were 20, 30 feet away from him, maybe trying to get a picture from far away, and they, were, they would literally chase that person down and say, yeah. put your phone yeah. down. Um, so it was kind of crazy. Um, as I did mention, we did see Phil uh, about 10 feet away from him at the Xbox Experience. I met uh, Larry Herb, and um, Ains got a picture with a few of the Mixer people. So uh, that yeah, was... Yeah, MK Ives, thanks for that. And um, who else did we see? I feel um, like we saw Tina people. from the Xbox team as well. Yeah, so um, there was... Right by the Sea of Thieves booth. We saw Boogie2988. If you're a YouTube person, he's he's fairly popular on there. But we've seen him like almost every single day just seen rolling around. We've actually um, seen a ton of devs we're forgetting. But yeah, nice yeah. people. They're almost everyone, um, you know, really friendly. Yep. So uh, it's really just about walking up and saying, hey, can I grab a picture with you? I haven't had anyone say no yet. No, we're in the bodyguards. Yeah, that was weird, but I understand it. I guess yeah. you could say it. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of our day two of E3, um, and hopefully you've enjoyed kind of just a recap of it. Um, tomorrow, our plan is to maybe see a bit more Capcom up close. The Resident Evil 2 booth really interests us. Yeah. That is another very long line. Um, it, there is rumored to be gameplay inside there, but however, there's more of a presentation for people that they see a presentation first and then a little bit of gameplay. Um, the main things for tomorrow for us are going to be Nintendo and Sony. Uh, we've already played Super Smash Brothers, but we haven't seen a few of the other titles from Nintendo. We Wasn't do want to Spider-Man. Yeah, we do want to make sure we can play Spider-Man. We've already played Call of Duty, which is a big highlight of the Sony booth. Um, and Division, or not sorry, Division Destiny, Destiny Two. Yeah, you're gonna wait for that one. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Destiny Two, we'll get some footage of that one and then call it a day. I'm not sure we'll be playing that or wait the two to three hours for it. 
Uh, but they have a lot of cool art on the Sony side, and we do want to get a picture of the massive screen that they have for Sony too. Yeah, PlayStation uh, Live is basically yep. being filmed on the floor, so and they've got a big sitting area where you can watch that, so it's pretty cool. Yep, and I think we might also try a little bit of the VR. So one of the cool things about the Sony booth is uh, they have all the main stuff, and then on the other side they have private rooms for every big VR title that they have. And if you've been following Sony for a while, they're really pushing the VR stuff mm -hmm. right now. So it'd be cool just to kind of check it out, see what it's about. Mm -hmm. Um, and then after that, just kind of enjoy the rest of our E3 as much as we can. It is the last day. It'll be running from 9 to 6, and the uh, industry and media and typical uh, fans that are attending are all sharing the same time slots and space. So it could be a very chaotic time, yep. um, or it could be easy to get things that we weren't able to get before. So. Uh, we'll see what we have. Anything else you want to close out on? Uh, only thing I forgot to mention is that in speaking with um, Sean at Capybara um, below, um, I talked to him about sharing release details, about sharing all the details he shared with me today. He said, uh, I'm certainly able to, as Bert said, he captured some footage. So I will write a full article on everything about below and everything that is talked about that could be uh, rather interesting to you and to uh, the people who listen to us. Obviously, I've got to find time to do that, but I also have to sleep. So uh, it's an yeah. inconvenience, I know, uh, but I'll get that up hopefully here in the next week or so and I uh, hope you find that interesting along with the Ash and stuff as well. Yeah, sleep's been a, a bit of a, a challenge to come by over here, not only with the time zone change, but there's so much that we're trying to keep up with. But uh, it's, uh, it's a nonstop thing here. Yeah. yeah so so if, it's, uh, as expected, right? So. But thank you for tuning in. Um, that's about all I wanted to add. I'm looking forward to tomorrow and getting as much uh, additional stuff as we can. Like we said before, if there's anything you're looking to see, um, please let us know. Um, I know uh, someone asked me for some Earthfall footage I forgot mm -hmm. to mention. Uh, earlier this morning, I was able to capture a nice large chunk of it. Uh, we talked about Strange Brigade. We may see if we can meet up with those guys tomorrow. They're not actually on the showroom floor. They're showing it kind of off floor in a media room. Um, so I'll try and hit that up as well. But if there's anything else you want to see, just uh, tweet at us on, uh, on Twitter. Yep. Thanks for watching, guys. Good morning or good evening. Or have a good evening, depending on where you're at. So thanks. That.